thoroughly address whitetail nutrition, view it as a chain, which each phase of the year is a link in that chain. Your chain is only going to be as strong as its weakest link. So, when does nature naturally provide the nutrition that whitetails need? Well, it depends on the region. If you're dealing with arid regions, actually summer can be a tough time versus the North Country, man, summer is a time of bounty. Flip side, winter can actually be a pretty plentiful time for some, for a lot of southern deer. Now, northern deer, winter is by far the most, the rut and winter are, is the most stressful period within a whitetail's life. Let's look at Mr. Big. He's gonna drop 25 to 30% body weight by going ahead and running himself literally ragged during the rut. Okay, and then what happens afterwards? Well, as we've already established, we're hitting that seasonal low point for nutrition now. Because of that, it's very common for white tails to run a negative energy balance all darn winter long. They end up burning more calories than they're able to consume. Each day they live, they're actually losing weight during winter. This is a perfect time to address nutrition for the whitetails in the North Country. But at the same time, you got all sorts of Northern people out there wanting to go out and dump corn. Now that's not good. It can cause ruminant acidosis. It messes up the pH within the rumen and it gives them the bad case of the squirts. Okay. Best case, worst case, it can actually kill them. So what can we do? Well, there's a whole bunch of things we can do as far as providing food, but here's something else we can do. We can offer minerals and vitamins, as well as a little bit of artificial feeding. When it comes to minerals and vitamins, if you want, first off, make sure it's legal in the state you're doing this. Okay, next, ask yourself what you're actually trying to achieve. If all you're trying to do is get deer pictures or something like that, you can go down and get yourself a salt block. Okay, if you honestly are trying to go ahead and do the most to improve the whitetail nutrition that you can. This is a case where generally speaking, you get what you pay for. Whitetails are ruminants, meaning they have four chambered stomachs, just like cattle, or just like cows, like sheep, like goats. What separates whitetails from cows, goats, and sheep is that their first chamber of their stomach, four chambered stomach, is comparatively smaller, meaning they can hold less bulk in that first chamber. That enables the cows, sheep, and goats to digest much more difficult plant matter than a whitetail can. As a nutritionalist with all sorts of letters after his name told me one time, it does not matter if my shoe is 100% protein and you eat it. You're not going to get you're not going to be able to absorb any of that protein in, its, in, its, in that form. So it's just gonna pass through your system. What a deer eats means nothing. What they're able to utilize means everything. That means that you want to use cleated minerals. They are much more expensive, but they go ahead and they far more accurately mirror how we digest things naturally, which increases their digest their digestive ability substantially. Next, make sure that there is some type of an additive in there to aid in digestion. It doesn't matter what they eat because if it just passes through, all it's doing is dumping out that back end. What matters is what they absorb. Really pay attention to quality on this type of stuff because there's a lot of well-intentioned people that are spending a lot of money on minerals out there. Then you might as well go down and get a salt left because that's, get a salt block, save yourself some money because that's really how much good you're doing. Okay, when it comes to feeding, as I said, I try to really stay away from, uh, really stay away from feeding corn myself. Straight corn, that is. You can go ahead and if you mix, if you mix corn, with a whole bunch of heck you mix corn with that uh, with those same minerals we were just talking about because of that digestive aid it goes ahead and makes it so that ruminant acidosis doesn't occur but be real careful if you're going to go ahead and feed corn what I'll go ahead and do myself is I'll create a mineral lick sometime around in the states are legal sometime in early February I will complement that with the graniac block now 
I have a little bit of food to help them as well. That block is going to give them a nice little boost, but at the same time, it's not going to draw hundreds of deer and it's got digestive aids so that doesn't cause ruminant acidosis. Really think about what you're feeding deer. Way too often, well-intentioned people actually end up being their own worst enemy by feeding garbage that hurts deer. Do a little research, select the products that actually work. If your goal is to improve the whitetail's nutrition, if it's just to attract deer, go out and buy a salt block or any one of the attractants that are on the market. White tails and common cattle such as goats, sheep, cows, they're all ruminants, but there's a difference. White tails have comparatively smaller first chambers of their stomach, so they cannot absorb anywhere near as difficult matter to break down food substances that a cow can, that a goat can, that a sheep can. Okay, so remember, it doesn't matter what a white tail eats. If you're trying to improve their health, what matters is what they're able to digest and utilize. Minerals and vitamins are very, very, very difficult to digest and, and to utilize. I cannot stress that enough. The overwhelming majority of them just pass through the system. This is a situation where you honestly get what you pay for. Pay for the, if you're trying to improve nutrition, trying to improve whitetail health, pay for quality. If you're not going to, go buy a salt block.